I'm going to go over the materials you'll need for this Shrinky Dink project with you and then um, show how to start tracing and drawing an image. Um, so first of all, before you start, these are the materials you're going to want to have on hand. Um, first we have our Shrinky plastic paper. Um, so these are really easy to find. We got ours off Amazon. Um, and this is a special type of paper that when heated will shrink and condense. So I have a few sheets of that here. Um, you might want an image to inspire you for your drawing or something to trace. You'll actually see that the paper is quite transparent. You can see right through it and it makes it really easy to trace images. So I have um, something here and then pencil and pen. Um, for your pen you're going to want something that will dry quickly so that it doesn't smear after you're drawing and then coloring in. So I have um, a pen that I know will work for that here. Some color pencils or you could also use um, non water soluble markers. So again, you want something that's not water based. Um, I'll just be using colored pencils today. Um, you'll want some craft scissors, which I have here. And then finally, you'll want a pan with a piece of parchment paper on top. Um, that's what your finished piece will go on before it goes in the oven. Um, so you'll want to have that ready as well. So now let's get started um, drawing or tracing our image. So there are a couple different ways you can create an image or put an image on paper. Uh, the paper I have here actually can also go through a printer, so you could pr print a design straight on it. Um, you can draw something freehand if you'd like, and then also you can trace from an image, from fabric, um, from something you print offline, really anything you could think of. Um, now what you're going to want to keep in mind is that when you draw on the shrink plastic, and then heat it, it's going to shrink to a much smaller size. So you're going to want to start pretty big because um, that's going to shrink about a third in size or maybe even more. Also, the colors when it shrinks will condense, so any dark lines will get even darker, your colors will get um, much darker, more colorful. So it's important to keep that in mind when you're drawing. You don't want to start too dark uh, because then your final image would be even more dark. Uh, so keep things light to start. I am going to choose to trace this nice 1920s flapper lady I have here, uh, so I'll just get that set up now. And I'm not even going to worry about the pencil. I'm going to go straight to tracing in pen since I can see where I want my lines. Um, I'm going to keep it pretty simple uh, so you don't have to worry too much about details if you don't want to. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to pick it up here so I can see what I have. And then, yes, I think I like that. So, next step is coloring or shading in, since I want some color in here. Um, I'm going to wait just a moment and let my ink just fully dry before I start. And then I'll go ahead and start adding some color. Again, I've got my finished image here, and I'm going to go ahead and start shading that in with some color. Um, you could change the colors if you want, or keep them the same as whatever it is you traced. I really like this red-orange hair, so I'm definitely keeping that. Now remember that when your plastic shrinks, again, that color is going to condense and get much darker. So you really don't have to make your colors um, too dark. I'm just going to keep things really light here. And then I'll go ahead and fill the rest of this in.
think I'm pretty happy with this overall. Um, so now we can move on to cutting out our image before it goes in the oven. I like to start by just cutting a general shape around it because this paper is pretty thick. Um, so I'm just going to very quickly cut out uh, the general shape before I get those details in. Okay, so here we are. Um, now, what you'll want to do before you start fully cutting out your object is to think about what this is going to be when it's finished. If you're making jewelry, like, um, like two identical images to hang from earrings, you're going to want to leave something at the top, maybe, for that uh, earring back to go through. Um, so you're going to want to keep that in mind. You wouldn't want to cut out the entire thing and then realize you should have left a border for a pin to go through. Um, so plan what you're going to do ahead of time so that you can make sure you don't cut off more than you want. I am just going to turn this object, I think, into a little... A pin so I'm not going to worry about leaving any extra space and I'm just going to completely cut out the border Okay, so here we are. You may have noticed I had some trouble with certain areas. Um, again, this plastic's pretty brittle and it will start to tear or break. Um, so just be really careful, especially as you go into tight corners and that sort of thing, um, especially if you're using bigger scissors. I found a smaller pair because I knew um, that might be a little more difficult with the image I had chosen. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but now I'm pretty happy with this overall, so I think I'm going to go ahead and put it on my sheet. I have another tracing here that I did earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and put these both in the oven. So, see you guys soon. Okay, so we are back with our shrinky things straight from the oven. There we go. And as you can see, these have gotten a lot smaller. So again, probably about a third of the size from uh, how they were before. Uh, let's, let's just take a closer look here. So our colors are nice and concentrated. The lines are nice and sharp. These really turned out very nicely. And you can actually see if you turn it, it's like a thicker piece of plastic now. Uh, so you could turn this into so many different kinds of things. I mean, you could do charms, you could do earrings, a necklace, on um, any kind of jewelry. Um, you could put it on a pin, you could put it on a bobby pin and put it in your hair. Um, you could put it on a push pin and use it to decorate like a cork board. Um, there are just so many options. Um, so again, this is just a really fun, easy craft. Um, I just really love how these turned out. Just awesome. Um, as a final step, if you would like, you can put um, like a, a thin layer of epoxy or maybe glue over the top just to seal in those colors, maybe uh, make the design a little bit shinier, have like a shiny finish. Right now it's sort of like a matte finish. Um, or if you'd like, you can use a sprayable fixative and just spray that lightly over the top as well to set in those colors. Just keep in mind if you do use the spray fixative you're going to want to do that outside um, and make sure you're not indoors when you spray that. Uh, but other than that we are all finished here and now we're going to go to Mary who's going to show you how to turn these little objects into jewelry if you would like. Hi welcome to part two of the Shrinky Dink Jewelry project. Katie showed you how to find an image, trace it, color it in, cut it out, and then shrink it to make your jewelry. I'm going to show you how you can use an inkjet printer to essentially do the same thing without the tracing and coloring. 
I went to Google Images and searched subjects that I thought would make fun jewelry, like chickens, birds, giraffes, feathers. Once I found the colorful ones that I wanted to use, I copied and pasted them into a Word document. Next, I placed my Shrinky Dink film into the printer. If you can see, one side is a matte, dull side. The other side is slick. I want the image to print on the dull, matte side because the ink will absorb better. So, discover the settings on your inkjet printer for the appropriate orientation. I've pulled my pieces out of the oven. You can see they've shrunk significantly. The colors have condensed and darkened. And then I used a Dremel tool to drill holes in the areas that I'm going to put my jewelry findings to make them wearable. There is a Dremel also in the iCube Makerspace at Novi Public Library for public use. Here are some of the jewelry findings that I'm going to use so that I can wear them on a chain. I have jump rings, eye pins, and two different types of earrings, the fish hook backing and lever back, uh, and then my chain. I will need a variety of pliers to use with the jewelry findings I just mentioned. Use two flat pliers to open your jump ring. Never pull apart, just twist until you have a slight opening. Now I'm going to attach the jump ring to the pendant. When you close the jump ring, you want to squeeze in a little bit as you bring the ends together. Pass one time again and continue pushing so that there is some tension put on that closing. And now we can feed the chain through the jump rings. For my earrings, I can also use a jump ring to attach it to the ear ring backing. However, I'm going to do a wire wrap technique with the eye pins. Similar to the jump ring, I'm going to take my plier and open up the eye part of the pin. Okay, now I'm going to attach it to the lever back earring. I'm going to place the earring on the pin, and since the long part, I have enough um, length that I can actually bend it with my hand just to get it started. Then I'll need to pick up one of my pliers and I grab it from behind and I'm going to wrap it around the stem. I'm going to wrap it two maybe three times bringing it down to the eye part of the eye pin. Now it is hanging from the lever back. Earring, I have a little excess that I'm going to use my cutters to cut off. And now I have a dangling earring. And here we go, our final pieces, a pendant and earrings with shrinky dink plastic and an inkjet printer. Thank you for joining us for this week's Craftastic Online. Be sure to check out other fun projects on Creative Bug. This is free with your library card. Thanks and have a great day.